Hello, Uncle Paul. Hi, Siobhan. Um, where were you born? I was born at Boston Lying In Hospital uh, in 1934. That's over on Longwood Avenue. The building is still there, but the Lying In Hospital is gone. I meant what? Which house? <laughs> I meant which house? <laughs> and after I was after yeah. I was born, I was brought back to a house at 74 Montgomery Street. You were born in Montgomery. So, All right. That's where the family Uncle lived Bernard at that time. Was, born. was he the only one born on Turnout? I believe so, yes. Okay. What cultural changes have you observed in all your years of living here? Cultural changes are sort of hard to quantify or, or, mm -hmm. or to put in place because you, you know, cultural changes you sort of have to go with the individual. What What's the culture for you, for me. But the big thing, I, I really haven't seen a lot of cultural changes. We always had a certain amount of arts in the area. We always had a certain number of people who were involved in music and the theater. And so we always had sort of a very diverse group of people. And culturally, there hasn't been a dramatic change that I've seen. Mm -hmm. In the definition of gentrification, what do you think has what, what parts of um, the South End do you see most changed? A gentrification, as I see it, is the influx of wealthy people coming in to displace the families that had been in a neighborhood, or families or people who had been in a neighborhood for long periods of time, and taking over their place in the community, if you would, with their own values, their own ideas of what a community or what a neighborhood should be. Changes that have taken place in that, I'm not really sure how I feel about some of them. I, I think the biggest change has been in the way neighbors work with or interact with each other. I think since gentrification, what I see looking at it is the new people coming in don't have the same sense of wanting to be a part of everybody around them. They have their own lives, they have their own uh, happenings, they have their own needs to earn a living. They have all of that stuff that goes along with coming into a neighborhood and not all of it means that they want to interact with you as the kid next door. Whereas growing up, when I was, when I was young, every neighbor you knew, whether they were cranky neighbors or nice neighbors, they wanted you to be part of it, or they didn't want anything to do with you. They were all part of the neighborhood, and you knew who they were. So we had one neighbor across the street who really didn't want anything to do with kids, but he wasn't nasty, he wasn't difficult. Uh, you just knew that that's what he was. We had another neighbor up the street uh, who was a very, very much a part of our lives, the lives of everybody in the neighborhood. And we had several neighbors who were like that. So I think that's a big difference. I don't see the same interaction uh, since gentrification has uh, come into being. What population, meaning what, um, um, who have you seen most dwindled down in the South End? Middle class people. I, I think that uh, you know, dramatically, and you're seeing it in, in a lot of neighborhoods, not just the South End, you're seeing it in uh, the South Boston. I think uh, you, you'll see it soon in Roxbury, Mattapan. Jamaica Plain is certainly seeing it. Now, the middle class seems to be going because a gentrification has raised the cost of being in a place. And once the cost of being in a place uh, goes through the roof, then all of the middle class or the poor people. Uh, and I don't remember in the South End being heavily poor in, in a good while. Uh, there are poor people certainly around, and there always will be. But I've, I've seen the South End more as sort of a middle class neighborhood, middle class place where almost everybody was on the same level. Uh, some of that has changed. You have some extremely rich people. And I don't know that because I know them, but I only know that because I see what the prices of being in the South End are. Mm. Um, now, uh, branch off of that question, what, what um, communities, like nationality, have you seen dwindling down the most 
Mm-hmm. Most probably, the biggest one I've seen, the biggest change was probably in the Syrian population in my time. Yeah. Uh, I think the Irish Catholic population has uh, dwindled dramatically. Uh, I, and some of that is really hard to know except by looking at the churches. And the churches themselves are an indication because they have either emptied out, they're not being attended, or they've gone completely. And you can look around how we used to do a thing called the Seven Churches uh, as you came up to Easter Sunday. And you could easily do the Seven Churches. That was visiting Seven Churches uh, in one night and saying a prayer in each one of them. Mm. And you could easily do that without going a great distance. We just had a lot of Catholic churches around us. Mm. So those are the two biggest changes that I've seen. Uh, I, I think if you look around now and somebody's looking at it, you'd probably see a big uh, dwindling in the African-American or the black population. Mm. I don't think that's nearly as, as large as it was. And some of that is economic, some of that is uh, the fact that uh, some people have improved their lot in life, they're doing better economically, so they're able to move to places like Milton, uh, Mm -hmm. places outside of Mattapan that have increased in in huge numbers the number of black people who have moved into the neighborhoods. Right. And do you think the results of gentrification have been positive or negative, or... What are the different positive and negative things that you've seen? I think, I think from the way I, was, the way I lived, or the way life was here in the South End, and the way I see it to some extent now, um, it's, it's, it's pretty negative. But having said that, uh, there are distinctly positive things about it too. The positive things, first, I think, would be that with money coming into the neighborhood, the neighborhood can look to do more things with the neighborhood if the neighbors want to be neighbors and they want to do it. Uh, In the time before gentrification really kicked in, I think you were seeing tons and tons of people who did because they, they did together because they needed to do together to make it work. And so you you played with the, the kids if they were across the street or you had a neighbor who uh, was interested in just being a neighbor, so they interacted with you. And I think, uh, I think you, you can play either side of it uh, with, mm-hmm. with, without a, a lot of difficulty and come up with great benefits. Uh, I think probably the biggest, and I'm not, a, I'm not a homeowner, so I'm only speaking from what I am told now, the biggest uh, downfall, uh, the, the biggest uh, negative to gentrification has been the increased uh, property values and along with it, the uh, taxes and the cost of living that to some extent might be driving the middle class, the people you'd like to see, or the people who have been here for long, long times, out of the neighborhood. Hmm. Do you have anything else to say? No, I just think it was a, I, I think that all, all through time you see changes in neighborhoods, and you're always going to see that, whether you see it uh, with poor people coming in and taking over as was the case way, way back towards the end of the, of the 1800s. There was a, a recession that drove a lot of the wealthy people out of the South End and poor people moved in. You had the railroad workers who came in. So you're going to see this flux all the time and it's just a matter of uh, finding a way to make it work for you and finding the best of it so that, uh, so that you can enjoy a good way of living. All right. Thank you for sitting down with me and thank you for participating in my project. Anytime at all.